Hi, I'm Amanda, a 38-year-old marketing executive. I thought I was living the American dream with my husband, John, and our son, Tyler. We have a nice house in the suburbs and I've always taken pride in being smart with our money. But sometimes, even the best laid plans can take a hard hit. It was a typical Sunday afternoon when my father-in-law, Richard, showed up for our weekly family dinner. As usual, he walked in like he owned the place, throwing his usual criticisms around. Amanda, dear, don't you think it's time to update this living room? It's looking a bit dated, he said with his signature condescending smile. I bit my tongue and forced a smile. We like it just fine, Richard. John, ever the peacekeeper, quickly chimed in. Dad, come on, let's just enjoy dinner, all right? As we sat down to eat, Richard shifted to his favorite topic, money. So, how's the college fund for young Tyler coming along? I couldn't help feeling a bit proud. It's going well, actually. We've been saving since he was born. But Richard scoffed, saving in this economy. You're practically losing money. I held my ground. We're being cautious. This is Tyler's future we're talking about. Caution never made anyone rich, Richard declared, undeterred. I could double that money in no time with the right investments. I noticed the spark in John's eyes and a pit formed in my stomach. Honey, we discussed this. Our current plan is working just fine, but Richard wouldn't let it go, spending the rest of the evening regaling us with tales of his financial prowess, each one more grandiose than the last. Later that night, while John and I were cleaning up, he dropped a bombshell. You know, maybe we should let Dad handle some of Tyler's college fund. He does have a lot of experience. I stared at him, stunned. Are you serious? We've worked so hard for this. What's the harm in letting him invest a portion of it? John pressed. He knows what he's doing. We argued for what felt like hours, but in the end, against every instinct I had, I gave in. The next day, I reluctantly transferred a substantial chunk of Tyler's college fund to Richard. Not long after, things started to feel off. The numbers just weren't adding up. I tried reaching out to Richard, but he always had an excuse. Richard, we need to talk about the investment. Oh, Amanda, darling, I'm about to head into a meeting. I'll call you back. But he never did. After weeks of this runaround, I knew I had to take matters into my own hands. Feeling like a character in some twisted crime drama, I hired a private investigator. When the PI's report landed on my desk, my world shattered. Richard, the man who'd lectured me on financial responsibility, had blown through her money on gambling. He was nothing but a degenerate gambler. I stormed into the bedroom, where John was reading. Your father, I spat, throwing the report at him. He's lost almost everything. John looked up, confused. What are you talking about? The college fund, John, it's gone. Your father's been gambling it away. He shook his head, disbelieving. No, that can't be right. That it wouldn't do that. Wouldn't he? Read the report. As he poured over the details, his face shifted from disbelief to shock and finally to anger. This, this can't be real. There has to be some mistake. The only mistake was trusting him with our son's future, I said, my voice shaking with frustration. John stood, his voice rising to meet mine. How was I supposed to know? He's my father, for Christ's sake. That's exactly why we shouldn't have trusted him. You know how he is, always thinking he knows best. Our argument raged, each of us wrestling with the betrayal in our own way. John torn between loyalty to his father and the damning evidence, me furious with both Richard and myself for letting this happen. Finally, exhausted, we sat on the edge of the bed, the weight of our new reality settling over us. What are we going to do? John asked quietly. I took a deep breath, trying to steady myself. We fight, we find a way to fix this for Tyler. John nodded, reaching for my hand. I'm so sorry, Amanda. I should have listened to you. We both made this decision, I said, squeezing his hand, but now we need to make it right. As we sat there, the enormity of what we'd lost hit me. 70% of Tyler's college fund, gone. Years of careful saving, of sacrifices and hard work, vanished because of one man's addiction. We need to tell Tyler, I said, dreading the conversation ahead. John nodded, guilt etched across his face, and we need to confront my father. The thought of facing Richard made my blood boil, but I knew it had to be done, for our family, for Tyler's future, and to ensure Richard could never do this to anyone else again. The next morning, I was up at dawn, my mind racing. I called in sick to work and spent the day making calls. 
for a sore lawyer than preparing myself for the conversation I dreaded most with Tyler. When he got home from school, he looked at me, concerned. Mom, what's going on? You look terrible. I patted the couch beside me. Sit down, honey. We need to talk. As I explained what had happened, I watched Tyler's face fall. But, what about college? All my plans. We're going to figure this out, I promised, pulling him into a hug. I'm so sorry, Tyler. He pulled back, eyes wet but resolute. It's not your fault, Mom. It's Grandpa Richards. We'll get through this together. His maturity nearly broke me, but I held it together. We had to be strong. Meanwhile, John was confronting his father. When he returned home, he looked like he'd aged ten years. How'd it go? I asked gently. John sank into a chair. He cried, Amanda. Said he was sorry that he'd pay us back. But I don't know if I believe him anymore. Sorry doesn't cut it, I snapped. We need real solutions. That's when I decided we'd need a family meeting. It was time to face this head on. When Richard arrived, the tension in our living room was thick. Tyler sat between John and me on the couch, a united front. Richard took his place in the armchair, looking humbled. I'm glad we're all here, I began. We need to discuss how we're going to fix this mess. Richard leaned forward, contrite. I know I made a terrible mistake, but I promise I'll make it right. I'll sell my car, my. I cut him off. It's not enough, Richard. You've lost nearly everything. How exactly do you plan to repay us? His calm demeanor cracked. Well, if you trusted me more in the first place, we wouldn't be in this situation. Excuse me? I felt my blood pressure rise. You heard me, Richard sneered. Always so controlling with the money. If you'd let me invest it from the start. John jumped in. Dad, that's enough. You can't blame Amanda for your gambling addiction. Gambling addiction? Richard scoffed. Don't be dramatic. I made a few bad bets, that's all, and now you're all gaining up on me. Amanda's turned you against me, hasn't she? I couldn't believe what I was hearing. You lost our son's future, and you're trying to blame me? Then Tyler stood up, hurt and angry. Grandpa, how could you do this to us? To me. For a moment, Richard's face softened, then it hardened again. You'll understand when you're older, Tyler. Sometimes adults have to make tough decisions. That was the last straw. I stood up, pointing to the door. Get out, now. Amanda, John began, but I shook my head. No, he's not welcome here anymore. Not after this. As Richard left, sputtering excuses, I felt an enormous weight lift off my shoulders. We figured this out without him. Little did we know, Karma was already catching up with him. A week later, we got a call from a family friend. Richard had been caught trying to embezzle from the country club's charity fund and had been expelled in disgrace, his reputation in tatters. Yes, his luck finally ran out, John said, shaking his head. I couldn't help but feel a grim satisfaction. Richard had dug his own grave, and now he was lying in it. As for us, we had a long road ahead, but at least now we were free from Richard's toxic influence. It was time to focus on rebuilding our lives and securing Tyler's future on our own terms. The day after the confrontation, I changed the locks and blocked Richard's number. It wasn't easy, but it was necessary. Are you sure about this? John asked, worry creasing his forehead. Absolutely, I replied firmly. We can't let him hurt us anymore. In the weeks that followed, Richard tried everything, calling from unknown numbers, showing up unannounced, even sending a tearful letter. But we stood firm. After another attempt one night, John sighed heavily. You know, I think you're right. Dad's always been toxic. I guess I just never wanted to see it. I squeezed his hand. I know it's hard, but we're doing the right thing. John also stepped up in a big way, picking up weekend shifts at a local hardware store. It's not glamorous, he said, but every little bit helps, right? Months flew by. Between my side gate as a financial consultant, John's extra job, and Tyler's scholarships, we were slowly but surely rebuilding our savings. One year after the richer fiasco, we gathered for a family meeting. This time, a happy one. I can't believe it, Tyler said, staring at the financial statement. We've almost replaced everything Grandpa Richard lost. We did it together, I said, a lump forming in my throat, as a family. Just then, John's phone buzzed. His face went pale as he read the message. What is it? I asked. It's Dad. He's been arrested for fraud. Looks like he tried to pull the same stunt with someone else's money. We sat in stunned silence. Then Tyler spoke up. I know it's wrong, but 
I'm kind of glad he's finally facing the consequences. I nodded. It's okay to feel that way, Tyler. What he did was terrible. As summer came to a close, it was time for Tyler to head off to college. Standing in his dorm room surrounded by boxes, I felt a mix of pride and nostalgia. I can't believe we made it, John said, looking around in awe. Tyler hugged us both. Thanks, Mom and Dad, for everything. As we drove home, I thought about how far we come. We have faced betrayal, financial ruin, and heartbreak, but we also discovered a strength we didn't know we had. We protected our family, secured Tyler's future, and emerged stronger. And Richard, he was finally facing the consequences of his actions alone and disgraced. As we pulled into our driveway, a sense of peace washed over me. We had weathered the storm and our family was stronger for it. Whatever challenges lay ahead, I knew we could face them together. And now I have a question for you. If you were in my shoes, would you have given Richard a second chance after he admitted to his gambling addiction and promised to repay the money? Or do you think cutting toxic family members out of your life is the right move, no matter how much they claim to have changed? Share your thoughts in the comments below.